morning and thank you for joining me on the Path to Liberty. I'm Michael Bolden with the 10th Amendment Center, and this is the Fast Friday edition of the show for August 26th, 2022. And on this episode, I'm talking about some essential anti-federalist warnings about the dangers of power. And one of their most prominent arguments really centered around the longstanding maxim that once power expands, People with power never seem to voluntarily give that power back. I've got a lot of great quotes on this from people you may have heard of, and I'm sure some of them you have not, but I think it'll be pretty interesting stuff. But first of all, before getting to that, a quick hello and a huge thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Whether this is your first episode or you've been here for every single one since day one, now over four years, I can't thank you enough for spending some of your time with me today, learning some of these essential foundational principles. And I should mention that if you want to follow along with uh, the original source documents that I mentioned in this show, we publish a blog post for every single episode that includes a, a show link section so you can read in context on your own time because I'm just scratching the surface. You can find all that over at tenthamendmentcenter.com slash path to liberty. It's all spelled out tenthamendmentcenter.com slash path to liberty. But since it's Fast Friday, I promise to not ramble too much. Let's see if I can get this info out to you in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Now, <laughs> it's not something I do too often, but let's start out with a quote from me, which is really probably just, and I'm not sure exactly when this came from, but we made a meme out of it. It looks kind of funny up there on the screen, me next to me, but it really is just me reiterating so many of the things that I, I've learned that I like to share with you, the warnings from the founders and the old revolutionaries about the nature of power. And here's the quote. When you spend decades demanding more centralized power to deal with virtually anything and everything, you shouldn't be surprised when that power eventually comes after you. The TLDR of me repeating stuff that I learned, this is not original at all, but basically anytime you give these people power to do something you like, never, ever forget that those people who have that power to do that program or whatever it is that you want them to do, well, they're not going to be around forever. Eventually, someone else is going to come in and they're going to get that same power. They may use it the way you like it. They may not. And on top of it, they'll probably try to do much, much more. And they're never, ever, ever just going to hand that back voluntarily. All that power handed them on a silver platter, they're never going to say, no, thanks. I don't need it. I don't want it. I'm not going to try to expand it ever. Let's get to the Anti-Federalists, and we'll start out with the great Mercy Otis Warren, writing as a Colombian patriot in 1788. She noted that, well, this is how she put it, but let the best informed historian produce an instance. When bodies of men were entrusted with power and the proper checks relinquished, if they were ever found destitute of ingenuity sufficient to furnish pretenses to abuse it. Short version again, if you don't keep them really tightly caged, they will always abuse their power. And the founding generation, and we can, we're can we talking about anti-federalists today, but the founding generation in general recognized that power didn't just corrupt. We know that old phrase, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, but it also seeks to expand all the time. And this was a leading argument of the anti-federalists. And here's how Brutus put it. In his second anti-federalist paper, he said, those who have governed have been found in all ages, again, not some or most or just a few or here and there, but in all ages, ever active to enlarge their powers and abridge the public liberty. He didn't even need to say the abridged public liberty because as soon as government, every time government expands power in and of itself, it is reducing liberty. Now, on top of it, beyond these things, the nature of power getting abused, the nature of people with power always expanding power. The anti-federalists warned on relying against just trying to get new people in power to limit power because once power expands, well, human nature. And that's how Patrick Henry put it in the Virginia Ratifying Convention, June 5th, 1788. He said, a willing relinquishment of power is one of those things which human nature never was nor ever will be capable of. Patrick Henry just hammered that home. And he said this many times. So did Melanchthon Smith. Basically, it is just the nature of humanity that soon as they have power, they're just going to use it. They're going to think they can use it in a good way and they're going to get supporters who like what they do. So they're going to keep pushing forward. But again, they're not going to be around forever. 
And then eventually, even if you like what they do, other people are going to have that power and they're going to do the same. And around and around and around and around we go. Here's Melanchthon Smith, probably writing as a plebeian in 1788. It could be somebody else. But uh, let's go with Melanchthon. This is natural to human nature. Once again, human nature. They were students of humanity and history. And it is consonant to the experience of mankind. For history affords us no examples of persons once possessed of power resigning it willingly. Again, Melanchthon Smith of New York writing probably as a plebeian in 1788. Here's George Mason. This is in the Philadelphia Convention, June 11th, 1787, where the framers were drafting the document. Those who have power in their hands will not give it up while they can retain it. So people who have power, they're always going to try to keep that power. And then on top of it, Mason warned us that on the contrary, we know they will always, when they can, rather increase it. So we're kind of putting together multiple maxims. Power is dangerous. Power corrupts, power expands, and no one ever gives power back once it's handed to them. George Mason again, a year to the day later, this time in the Virginia Ratifying Convention, June 11, 1788, he said, I will venture to assert that out of a thousand instances where the people precipita precipitately and unguardedly relinquish their power, there has not been one instance of a voluntary surrender of it back by rulers. So Mason understood the same thing that these other writers did, or maybe it was the other way around. Here's Governor Clinton, the other one, George, in the New York Ratifying Convention, uh, July 11th, 1788. History does not furnish a single instance of a government once established voluntarily yielding up its powers. We can talk about the context of these quotes and these statements in another episode if you guys are really interested. But I think the maxim, when it's something's a maxim, it can be applied to any situation that, well, applies. So as soon as you give them power, the idea that, well, it's just going to be temporary, this, there's nothing more permanent than a temporary government program is the more modern saying. And that's what we've been told we were warned about from all the way back in 1787 and 1788. Here's Federal Farmer. Uh, paper number four. Some people think it's Richard Henry Lee. I'm pretty certain that it was not. It could have been Melanchthon Smith, but we're not 100% sure. This is October of 1787. Men who govern will, in doubtful cases, construe laws and constitutions most favorably for increasing their own powers, recognizing that even when you put together a really good constitution, you've got words on paper that tell them they're only authorized to do certain things. You shouldn't be surprised when once they get in power, they're going to read it in a way that authorized them to do more than what was authorized in the first place. Here's an old wig, also in November of 1787. People once possessed of power are always loath to part with it. And again, to Patrick Henry, this time June 9th, 1788, in Virginia Ratifying Convention, he said, look for an example of a voluntary relinquishment of power from one end of the globe to another. You will find none. Absolutely none. And this was so important to the arguments against ratification was, well, they were concerned that they were going from the articles to a much more powerful general government. And they were saying, well, this is just a little too much. Why don't we back off a little bit, add some more restrictions first, because if we're trying to get something done and we can even agree that we want to make some changes to the way things are, Patrick Henry probably less than many others, let's not give them too much and hope we can fix it down the line because that is really a dangerous approach. Here's Melanchthon Smith, again, probably writing as a plebeian in 1788. The history of the world furnishes many instances of a people's increasing the powers of their rulers by persuasion. And I would add also fear. And maybe the fear is the persuasion. We know that fear is the foundation in most, if not all, situations of government power. And so the people are convinced that they have to let the government do more stuff. But Smith goes further. But I believe it would be difficult to produce one in which the rulers have been persuaded to relinquish their powers to the people. At the end of the day, there weren't really any big disagreements over these general principles, these maxims from Federalists as well. 
John Dickinson, for example, we could call him uh, maybe the father of the Articles of Confederation. He was a supporter of ratification of the Constitution. He did acknowledge that a good Constitution promotes, in his words, but does not always produce a good administration. James Iredell down in North Carolina, one of the leading legal minds of the time, he was one of the first associate justices on the Supreme Court, nominated for that position by George Washington. He recognized in the North Carolina ratifying convention that in his words, again, abuse may happen in any government. It doesn't matter how good of a constitution you have, you still can find people with power trying to abuse that power and expand that power because they all agreed that that was part of human nature. But ultimately for Iredell and many others, it would have to be up to the people, in his words, to resist when government usurps power, not delegated to it. Well, I hope you guys found this interesting. I hope it was educational, more important than anything. I hope you learned something. Of course, if you want to help us spread this kind of message to more people, absolutely nothing helps us roll up our sleeves every single day and get that kind of work done more than the financial faith and support of our members. Don't feel obligated to join us, but if you're able to throw a few dollars of fiat our way every month, we will use it fighting back against the largest government in history to promote the Constitution and liberty and how to defend both when government refuses to do so, which is constantly. You can join us today over at Tenth Amendment Center dot com slash members other ways to help out leave a review on apple Podcasts, smash the like button leave some comments on any of the video platforms those types of things will trigger algorithms and tell them to show us to more people it really does help a great deal again i hope you enjoyed this quick take these uh anti-federalist warnings on the nature of power uh, if you're interested in more of this kind of thing i'm happy to do more but please uh, let me know you can also email me at team at 10th Amendment Center .com. Again, thank you so much for watching or listening. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week here on the Path to Liberty.